Hey and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, here's today's puzzle. It's a classic Sudoku. Um, this has come in from John uh, to our email address which is uh, crackingthecrypticgmail.com and he says it's from a Japanese puzzle magazine um, and that doesn't surprise me when I look at the grid um, because the grid is symmetrical. It has a sort of real beauty about it. Um, there's a big difference I think between Japanese puzzles and the puzzles that we get in the West and most of our puzzles that we get in our uh, newspapers and magazines are computer generated um, and in Japan that is unheard of everything that you get in their national media is handcrafted um, which do I prefer? Well I'm a huge fan of handcrafted puzzles and the reason for that is that I think that um, the setter of a handcrafted puzzle has given some thought to the solver's experience in solving and you know what how the logic will flow, where the difficulties will arise, how how the you know, how the logic will progress. A computer doesn't do that. A computer relies on its algorithm. Now there are some good algorithms out there, not many, uh, and nothing to compete with in my in my view anyway. The sort of best Japanese pencil puzzle creators, um, and there are a number of Western fantastic puzzle setters too, um, but. I'd always recommend that's the way to go and it's it's that communication between solver and setter that I think is important. Um, I can't remember if I've said this, if you want to try the puzzle click on the link under the video that will take you to our software, you'll get to see exactly what I'm seeing. We've also had a few questions while I remember about our Sandwich Sudoku app on Android. It is out now but people are not finding it on the Google Play Store because they, uh, apparently if you go onto Google Play and you just search for Sandwich Sudoku, it's not appearing, and that's because Google haven't updated their lists yet. Uh, we expect them to do that at some stage, uh, but until they do, you will need to use the link that I have provided. So uh, I'll put it in the description on YouTube for this video, and also that I'll put a card up that you should see on your screen now. So if you do want to buy the game on Android, that is the way to do it until Google sorts its life out. Um, right, let's have a look at this puzzle, um, and I hope, given that I've said handcrafted puzzles are the way forward, um, that that proves to be true. So, ones you can see I can pencil mark because of these two ones in this block, and that does the same in the central 3x3. Three three. Ah, in fact, twos. Look, if these twos interact in the same way, force twos into one of those squares as well. So there's a one-two pair now in this top three, middle three by three block. So the way my mind works, don't know if you're the same, I immediately look at this eight. Because now this, we can't have an eight in either of these two squares. The eight is forced into one of those two positions. And well, that means there's an eight in one of those three squares, but I can't immediately see how to make use of that so let's come back nines those two nines there mean there's a nine in one of those two squares and that means there must be a nine in one of these two squares too oh need to delete that one um bah, what next uh ah sevens this seven and this seven look i'm going to get seven pencil marked at the bottom and that gives us our first digit now because of this 7 on the left hand side, the only place a 7 can go in the central 3x3 three three is there. That means this is a 7 because of the 7 down here. This is a 7. This is a 7 and we're getting a right flurry of 7s here. So and those are 7s. So we're just left with these sort of these 7s unsolved. sixes, these two sixes. They in fact there's a real symmetry about how this one these ones and twos arose and how there's a six seven pair at the bottom look exactly the same way. So now as this must be a six And this 5 now is interesting, 
because there must be a 5 in one of those three squares. Now I don't know which of these three squares in the central 3x3 three three block the 5 is going to go into, but when we come up to this top block now, where can the 5 go? Because of this 5 over on the left, it can only go here. Let's get some more pencil marks. And ah, hang on. Now this 6 and this 6. So there's a 6 in one of those two squares. And now the, there's also a 6 pencil marked into these same squares. And we've got a 5-6 pair over on the right hand side. And this, look at how brilliant this is. This is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And this is this is designed. Remember that this is not this is not random. Look at the effect of this five and six on this puzzle. It is just superb. So we need to think about this three by three block. Now, because there can't be a five or a six in either of these squares, we know the 5 and the 6 in this 3x3 three three block will be locked into one of these four squares. And the critical thing to note about that is that the 5 and the 6 are locked into either column 8 or column 9. Exactly the same columns that this 5 and 6 are locked into in this top right 3x3 three three box. So I need to put a 5 and a 6 somewhere in column 7. Well, this square is ruled out this square's ruled out, so there must be a 5 and a 6 in these two squares. Isn't that beautiful? Now this 6 here resolves actually which, which all of that must be in. So because there's a 5 and a 6 in these squares and this 5 and 6 here, we're forced to put the 5s and the 6s into these two squares in this 3x3 three three block. Couldn't put a 5 or a 6 in any of those squares it wouldn't work. If you try it, you'll see. You put a 5 here, that would mean this would be a 5, and there'd have to be a 5 here in this block as well, because of the 5 over there, and we get repeated 5s in the column. So, now, ah, now we've got 6s here and this 6 here, so that's a 6, that means that's a 6, and do anything with this 5, Yes, we can. Look, the fives interact again. There must be a five now in one of these two squares. Which means this is a five because of the five down here. And uh, Okay. Uh, what next? Sevens. Locked eights into one of those two positions. These two squares here must be a three and a four. Look, um, just to complete the column. And these two squares must be eight and nine. Ah, and there's an eight here. So that's a nine. And that's an eight. And that's cool because this eight now, that means there must be an eight in one of those two squares. So this can't be an 8 anymore, which means the 8 is going to be there. So this is a 3 or a 4. And this is a 3 or a 4, Just that's just completing row 3 of the grid. But I don't think I used this 9. No, I didn't. Yeah, that 9 is also going to resolve this 9 here, which means We've got one, three, and four to place in the top left three by three block. Um, now this one can't, this is a three or a four, this one can't be a one. These two, I think, can be ones. And what next? This four, maybe? We can pencil mark fours into those two squares. And What now? In this row we still need a 1, 3 and a 4. So this square is a 1 or a 3. Ah, ooh, okay. And now that means there's a 4 in one of those two squares. 
We need to put a 4 somewhere in row 4 of the grid. It must be in one of these two squares. Now that is interesting because look, that marries up. The fact there's a 4 in one of these two squares marries up exactly with the positions of a 4 in row 3. So this arrangement is a classic X-wing. I'll colour it in. And let's think about what it means. If we think about the finished solution, there could be a 4 here. If there's a 4 here, there would have to be a 4 here. So those two squares could be 4s. But if, on the other hand, this square turned out to be the 4 in the finished solution, then looking at row 4, the 4 would have to go there. So we know that the 4s in this 2x2 two two area are on the diagonals in one direction or another. And the critical thing that means is that when we look down the grid here, there can't be 4s in any of those yellow squares. And, well, these two fours, these two squares don't matter because there was already a 4 here. So the critical stairs, sorry, cells I think we need to look at are those squares. The fact that those squares can't contain 4s, what does that mean? Uh, well, one thing it means, if we look at row 9 of the grid and ask where a 4 can go now, it can't go in either of those two squares because of this 4. It can't go here because we know that's part of a 6-7 pair. And it can't go in either of these two squares because of the X-wing. So there's a 4 in one of those two positions. Uh, which means that there's a 4 in one of these two positions looking... Okay, so okay, so hmm. I thought that would be the step that we needed to crack the puzzle, but it's not, or it doesn't seem to be. I might be missing something. Oh, but hang on, ones are restricted as well. Let's have a look at ones. Yes, yes, I'm going to delete this X-Wing now. Look, look at this. Um, where can ones go in column three? Those two positions are possible and that position is possible. So these three cells, let's highlight them, do it in green. These three positions can take a one in column three. In column four, only those two squares. And in column nine, only those three squares because of the one here and this one here. Now this arrangement is a swordfish. So it's just one sort of extra dimension to the X-wing. Um, so we know the ones in these particular columns can only occupy the green squares. And that means that somehow the ones will be arranged. We don't know in the finished solution what they'll look like. It could look like, oops, like that or like this. Uh, or this could be a one, you know, that we, we, we don't know how they're going to resolve themselves. We just know that they have to appear in these three positions. Now, that matters because that's going to mean we can eliminate ones from the rest of the rows this time. So there can't be ones in any of these cells. Now some of these cells couldn't be one anyway. There's a one two pair up here look so I'm just trying to spot what the implication of this is. So there's these squares really matter. These squares matter. These two don't matter because there was a one already here and this square. So the yellow squares I think are the really affected squares here. None of these yellow squares can contain a one. So what does that mean? Let's just check this, this box because there's a lot of given information. So if this square can't be a 1, it's got to be 3, 8 or 9. I can't see if anything's... I can't see what's changing that. If this can't be a 1, this can This can only be five, six, or nine. Oh, 
No, that's no good either. And over here, there's just there's too much, too many possibilities for these squares. I can't think that's going to matter. What's going on then? If this sword, maybe I'm not meant to use the swordfish. Oh, uh, hang on, hang on, look. Let me just delete these uh, highlightings. I'll put them back in if we need them. I'm just going to remember there's a swordfish there. Look, 587 there, 587 here. So let's come back to this bottom left 3 by 3 block and ask where a 5, 8 and 7 can go. So they can't go in these squares and they can't go in these squares. So we need to put the numbers 5, 8 and 7 into this 2 by 2 corner. Where, because of our X wing, we've already pencil marked 4s. So these 4 squares are a 5, 8, 4, 5, 8, 4, 5, 7, 8 quadruple. I'm going to put that in. That's, that's a good spot. Hang on, let me just... Um, 4, 5, 7, 8. Now this one can't be a 7. This one can't be a 7 because of the 7 here. These two can't be 4. Okay. But it's still good. It's not... Yes, it is good. It is good because now <laughs> we've done an X-wing trick on this three-four pair uh, using um, the fours. But look, now we can do an X-wing trick using the threes because if we look at where a three can go in row eight of the grid, it can only go in these two squares because of this three here and the fact we've just found this quadruple. The three is locked into one of these two positions. So again, I mean, I'm not going to sort of keep going over it, but in the finished solution, there'll either be a three here and a three here, or a three here and a three here. So the affected squares, there's already a three in the row nine. We cannot have threes in any of those squares. It's impossible. And that means, look, that means, look at row four. If we can't have a three in either of these two squares, this must be a three. And that is absolutely beautiful. So now we get a three, four pair at the top there. Three. This must be a one, four pair. There's no three in either of those two squares. So there must be... There must be a three in one of those two positions. Don't know if that matters. That means in this block there's a three in one of those two positions. And in this block, these two squares must be two and eight to complete the block, and there's an eight there. So this is an eight, this is a two. Ah, now that means this is a 1 and this is a 2. That means this isn't a 1 anymore. So there's a 3, 4 pair now in this block, and that's the one at the top. This square. This square is weak because obviously we've got this quadruple going on here. So this square can only be 1, 2, 3, or 9. And look, one, two, nine. So this square is a, a naked single. It must be a three. That means this square must be a four. That means this square is a three. This is a four. That's a four. That's a three. And are we on the home straight now? What a brilliant puzzle this is. Um, Don't want to make a mistake at this same. So there's a three in one of these two squares. Seven, eight. If 
we look along this row, we need to put the numbers 1, 2 and 9 in somewhere. Look, we've got a 1 and a 2 there. So that one is a 9. Now where do we put a 9 in this 3 by 3 block now? Only in that square. Now the moment I do that, look, I've got pencil mark 1 in there, so I'm going to be able to go 9, 1, 4. This is a 9, by normal Sudoku rules. These two squares are 1 and 8 in some order. That's now resolvable. That must be 8 and 1 like that. Must be 1 in one of those two squares. 5, 6 and 9 down here. Uh, these two squares, we still need to put a 4 in the central block, so that's 4 and 3 like that, which means this is 3 and 5, just unwinding the pencil marks. I'm really hopeful that we're, we're nearly there now. 5, we are ruled out there, so this is 4, 7, yes. Look down here, we need 4, 7 and 8 to complete the column. We have a 4 and a 7 there, so this must be an 8 which means this is 7, this is 4. So this becomes a 5-8 pair, and in the centre this becomes a 1 and a 2. It's still working, that becomes a 1 and a 9. This becomes a 1, therefore. This becomes a 9. Oops, I mean a 9 like that. Uh, this must be a 2. This must be a 4 and a 3 to unwind that. Um, 6 and 7 here is, is fixed now because of the 7 and the 6 there. This must be a 6. So this should be 2 and 5, which you can see is resolvable now. That resolves the 5 and the 6 at the top. This is a 3-8 pair, so that should be like that. That should be 8 and 5. Now, let's check. Yes. What a puzzle. What a puzzle that is. Um, now I think I got sidetracked in the middle because that swordfish I found didn't do anything for me. But the X-Wing the on the fours was, I mean, that is quite something. That really is quite something because it allowed me to find a four pair in those two squares, which Interacting with the 5, 7, 8 in these positions forced this 4, 5, 7, 8 quadruple down there. That That is just, it's stunning design, absolutely stunning design. And it allows us to get the second X-Wing on threes. That puzzle, that is one of the all-time great Sudokus we've had on this channel. I am I'm lost in admiration for it. I'd love to know how you guys found it. Do, um, do leave us some comments um, if you enjoyed it, even if you didn't. <laughs> uh, we like the feedback, and thanks very much for watching. What a puzzle.